Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to inspect fluorescence images with InspectJ. Here I will show you a video screen capture for you to really see what's going on on my computer monitor. First I will open ImageJ or if you like Fiji. Yeah, here it is. And I will open a fluorescence image. In this case, I will drag and drop a image from fluorescence microscopy. Yeah, so let me magnify this image. And I hope you can see that this is an RGB, red, green, and blue image. It shows two signals, a red and a green signal. The red signal is a mammalian nuclei surrounded by some green signal. Okay, before we start the analysis with InspectJ, let's apply a more conventional way to check for image integrity, uh, which is simply by uh, playing with contrast settings. So I will go to image J, image, adjust brightness contrast, and I will increase or reduce the contrast by moving the slider here. Okay, please have a look at the image while I'm increasing the contrast. Yeah, I think it is obvious that the contrast got increased and then I will reduce the contrast by moving to the other side and you see a very kind of weak contrast right now. But I hope you can see that there are no obvious signs of image manipulation detectable. Yeah, so this kind of method did not really help to find if something is wrong with this image. Okay, so let's do the analysis with InspectJ. I will drag and drop the InspectJ icon onto ImageJ to open the software. Here it is. Just let me make the window a little bit smaller, move it to the side, and I will run InspectJ. Yeah, so macro, macros, run macro to start InspectJ. The first thing InspectJ will do is it will separate the three channels, the red, green, and blue channel of the image. Yeah, so now we have an individual red, an individual green, and a blue channel. The user can now decide whether to analyze only the red channel, only or only the green channel, or only the blue channel. And it can be selected here in this window. So you can check for red, green, or blue, or for all three channels at once. Okay, here I will analyze only the red channel. So I check red here, and I click OK. The last thing I have to do is to select the background. Obviously, the background here is a dark background, so I leave it as is, and I just click on OK. Before I do this, uh, let me just tell you that right after I click on OK, InspectJ will immediately start displaying different color threshold and intensity settings. So a movie will run for me to really inspect by eye and try to find if there is uh, some suspicious areas in the image hinting towards image manipulation. So I will start now. Please have a look on the image. OK. And I hope you could see immediately, let me magnify while this is running, that there was some area suspiciously looking here. And there was also some area suspiciously looking down here. Yeah. So this runs through now the first round is done. InspectJ asked me if it should uh, kind of uh, continue with the analysis or if I should stop. At this moment, before we decide on this, let's have a look at the image. And I hope you can see that obviously there are these two suspicious areas here and here. And even though I don't know what has been done to these images, I can see that clearly something has been done and these two things are not correct. Yeah. If I have to guess, I would say something got copy pasted onto the image, maybe from another image. And here, an area with unwanted signal was cut out or erased. And what you see here is just an, an empty kind of area, which previously had some content. Let's put it this way. Okay. So, but InspectJ can do much more. It can not only find such areas, it can also look for clones, which are identical items within the image. It performs an object analysis 
Yeah, and all these objects are listed in the results table and they are listed in the Royal Manager list. But you can see here the results table and here the Royal Manager list. Yeah. But before we look more carefully at those clones, let me continue here with my scan and I would also like to have another round of particle analysis looking for clones. Okay. So I click OK. Inspect J will then ask me if I would like to change the parameter settings for the clone analysis. By default, it has performed already a clone analysis in the first round with tolerance settings of 0%, as you can see here in the log window. Yeah. Now, in the second round, I have the chance to change these tolerance settings to whatever value I like. I will set it to 3%, for example, for all parameters listed here. By the way, these parameters can be set by the user, of course, for InspectJ. Then I click OK. The analysis will be done and I stop the software now. I will not continue because I have all the information I need. Again, they are the obvious areas here and here, but now we focus on the clone analysis. So, in the log window, we have now the results of the analysis with 0% tolerance for the parameters chosen, and I have the results of the clone analysis for 3% tolerances for the parameters chosen. Yeah. If I count the number of results, we see that here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight lines. Sorry, nine lines. And here we have 10 lines. One, two, three, four, five, 10 lines. Exactly. Okay. So let's first look at identical items that are 100% identical because there is no tolerance. They have to be 100% in order to be considered identical. Yeah. Here are the numbers of these objects and I can, I can kind of label these objects simply by using the Roy list, region of interest manager list here on this image or if you like on the original image. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit nicer to see this on the original image. So I will first label the objects that are identical for the first group here, which is number 2, 10, 14, and 30. So number 2 is this one. I will just outline this. 2. Number 10 is this one. Number 14 which is this one here, number 30, which is down here. Yeah. Now, after outlining these objects, I think it becomes really obvious that they are identical. Okay, let's go to the next group, which is 4, 28, and 32. Yeah. So this is number 4 here, and let me outline them. Let me outline number four. Okay. 28 and 32. 28 is here. And 32, which is down here. Oh, I forgot to outline it here. Okay. So now after outlining these, I think again, it is becoming really obvious that these objects are identical. Yeah. In case you wonder what's going on with these numbers, it's not only 2 is identical to 10, 2 to 14, and 2 to 30. No, it's also that 14, of course, is identical to 30, and 10 is identical to 14. Yeah, That's why the list is a little bit longer. Okay, but these are the groups of identical items. Okay, this is at 0%. Yeah, so the Again, these objects are 100% identical. Well, very often when people manipulate images, they copy and paste uh, objects elsewhere. 
But before they paste these objects, they, they, they change these objects. For example, they reduce their intensity or they turn them around. They flip them horizontally or vertically. So they do something with the objects, not to, to make it not too easy for others to detect that these are nothing but identical items. If this is applied on an image, often the object changes a little bit. So due to the discrete nature of these images, they cannot be, after they have rotated, be 100% identical to the original object. And this is why it is so handy to use tolerance levels to allow a little bit of change, but not too much, to assess whether these objects or items are still identical or not. Yeah. So here, with an increase in tolerance from 0 to 3%, we see that, of course, InspectJ has found the very same objects and, on top, another pair of identical items, which is number 13 and 33. So let's look at 13 and 33. Just go to 13, which is this one, and 33 which is this one. So we have this one here and this one here. Okay, let me outline them. This one and this one here. Okay, so why were they not 100% identical? Obviously, by looking more carefully, it seems as if one of them was rotated, I would say 45 degrees, towards the left. yeah. So, if I look carefully at this image, I see a bright spot here, which is a little bit further up here, as if it was rotated, as I said, um, 45 degrees to the left. That's the reason why they are not 100% identical, but they can still be detected by slightly changing the tolerance level of the particle analysis. Yeah. So, in other words, uh, one can say these objects are identical at a certain tolerance level. Okay, so I hope I could convince you how easy it is to inspect, for example, fluorescence images with InspectJ. InspectJ immediately found obvious image manipulations, as you can see here and here, and on top it is capable of identifying identical objects within the image. If these objects are not 100% identical anymore, it can provide a tolerance number or tolerance value to really determine at what level the images are still identical. Okay, please check the other videos on InspectJ Thank you very much for watching and cheers from the ZMBH Imaging Facility.